This video is sponsored by Movement. Use the discount link in the description for 15% off. All right, so I was out for a rip the other day in the Rockies and I was just cruising along and then I see this and I think to myself, oh, that's kind of weird. I've never seen anything like that before. You wanna know why it's weird? Because mountains don't look like that. And if mountains don't look like that, then neither should your city's skyline. Rule number one of planning a Minecraft city. If you have high rises, you need to have other buildings to help step up to them. If you have low rises that immediately switch to high rises, it looks weird and oddly dystopian. Luckily for the world, there are these things called mid rises. Not only do mid rises help transition a city from low to high rises, they also help frame the street and provide housing or offices for people who don't want to work or live in high rises. In this video, we will start by planning our building requirements, we will create the floor plans, and then I will guide you step by step on how to build a mid rise. Before we get started, I'd really appreciate it if you'd hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. I promise that every click makes a huge difference in the growth of the channel, which means more and higher quality content for everyone. Also, only a small percentage of viewers are actually subscribed, so if you consider it, it would make my day. Okay, so the first floors of mid-rises should be used to help animate the area around it by using large windows and inviting designs with shops and restaurants. Let's add an elevator and some stairs encased in a concrete shell, also known as a shear wall. The curator working on this area requested a restaurant, so that's what we're going to have. In the restaurant, we will need a dining area, public washrooms, a couple of employee washrooms, an office for the manager, a break room, and I want to make the walk-in freezer its own room, and we can deal with the walk-in fridge in another video. Since the upper floors are going to be condos, we will need to have a small lobby with a bike room, stairs, and an elevator. Let's make the entrance a double section where the first section is public, but to get past the second part, you need a fob to get into the building. You might notice there's an incline near the bottom here, so having the first floor all on the same level is going to be difficult. I think it would be interesting to have a clothing shop or something else down here with a double floor opening and a loft at the back. I want to have a glass roof for this section, so let's push the rest of the building backwards here to make room. You'll see what I mean in a second. Let's add some residential units on the south side of the building, and I also want to add a study room, a meeting room, and a gym on the other side. We just have to be careful here because this is a solid wall, so we cannot have windows until we go above the other building. All right, so the third and fourth floor will be identical with at least three units. I'm going to leave it super vague and not plan more walls than I have to because I'm going to furnish the interiors in an upcoming video, so stay tuned for that. The penthouse will have two floors and it will all be one unit. Here's a sneak peek at what the view will look like of the city. The east side of the penthouse will be a double floor opening that will be used as a living room and will host a staircase to the second floor. Let's have a little setback on the front for a large balcony and then a smaller balcony here on the side. All right, jumping to the second floor, we need to actually plan out the exact rooms this time because we are going to have skylights on the roof. This floor will be relatively simple. Let's have a bedroom, a bathroom, a kitchen, and a dining space. We also have this extra little bit right here that I added from floor number one to the first penthouse floor, but I want it to be a skylight and not actually connect to the top floor. You'll see what I mean when we build it. We're going to jump into the building phase here in a second, but I quickly want to tell you a story. All right, so you know how at the start of the video I was talking about how I was out in the Rockies, right? Well, I was actually going to my local maple syrup shop. Issue is they close at 9 p.m. I saw it was getting dark and I thought to myself, what time is it? Luckily for me, I had used the discount link in the description for 15% off my movement watch. Turns out it was just after 8, so I had an hour to get my maple syrup for the week. Thankfully, I made it and all was well. All right, so I want to be very clear and transparent with everyone watching about sponsorships on this channel. I was the one that originally reached out to Movement regarding a partnership. When I graduated high school four years ago, my parents got me a Movement watch as a grad present. I'm serious when I say this, I've worn it nearly every day since I've got it. These watches are super nice, super minimal, and you can wear them for quite literally any occasion. I have a handful of watches being shipped to me as we speak, so once they arrive, I'll show them off in another video. After all this, and by even just looking at them, they look pretty expensive, right? Well, the thing is, they're actually very affordable, with watches starting around $95 and the sunglasses at $60. They also donate a portion of sales from their Ocean Plastic Edition watch to the Surfrider Foundation to aid their efforts in ocean conservation. Anyway, feel free to check it out. You can get 15% off by going to mvmt.cc alpine or clicking the link in the description. They also have free worldwide shipping and free returns. I'll show off the new watches once they arrive, but for now, let's get back to the mid-rise. 
Even if you aren't building to be structurally realistic, I would highly recommend clearing out a foundation area for your build anyway. This gives you the option to build lower if you need it. If you don't want to, you can fill it in later, just like you'll see in a minute. Once we have all four sides, we can start with the first floor facade. The larger gap right here is for the lobby entrance, and we will add stairs and a ramp up for universal accessibility since it isn't at ground level. Once we have our window design, let's stack it up, but change it a little bit since the first floor is a couple blocks taller than the upper floors. Having this small horizontal trapdoor allows for some window depth, but doesn't sacrifice the togetherness of the facade. Let's copy, rotate, and paste the same design around the side and the back. For the floor plan, we can use blue where the walls will go and just use yellow to indicate an elevator or stairs. Okay, let's move on to the shop. Since the roof is going to be glass, we might as well make the walls glass as well. I'm just using rails and cubed pack, so that's why it's diagonal. For the big skylight, let's make a fancy design with rails and have the white trapdoors extend over top for continuity between the front wall and the top. I love complex elevation changes, so we can add some stairs and ramps out front. One of the tips I like to give when you get bored of building, just add some decorative trees and greenery before continuing your build. It will help refresh your mind and get the creativity flowing again. Okay, so I want this indented facade section to feel different, but keeping the same colors and window sizes. Let's make a basic design with acacia trapdoors and stack it upwards. We can then take the original facade design and make a second corner right here for a bit of complexity and to allow some space for a small balcony. Moving to the top, now that we are above the roof of the adjacent building, we can switch to windows. We have to keep going around the side here, but I don't want to keep the same design, otherwise it'll get bland. We can add some double wide windows and have floors 3 and 4 connected. Okay, so now it's time to build the staircase. We will have the stairs wrapping around an interior wall inside the shear wall. I will make it bigger than required since the ceiling height varies depending on the floor. The first floor is 7 blocks tall, but the others are 5. And between each floor there are 2 blocks, one for the ceiling and one for the floor. We can fill in the ceiling and floors and add a vague floor plan for the 3rd and 4th floors. I don't want to add too much detail because we're going to fill them in in a new video. Okay, now we get to the fun part. It's time to build the penthouse. We can start with the front glass, lining up the large columns with every second white brick column from the front. We can also extend the elevator and stairs up to penthouse level one, but not to the second. All right, once we double up the front windows, we can touch up some details. Let's add some vertical trap doors and slabs on top to make it feel more grand. Once that's finished, we can make a general floor plan and extend the walls around the sides. One thing I want to point out is that in some places I'm using double thick walls because I want to have one material on one side of the wall and another on the other side. Something you might notice is this black column sticking out that I covered with white trapdoors. In my original plan I actually forgot to consider that the elevator needs to go all the way up to the roof where there will be some mechanical equipment. We can pretend there is an integrated ladder here too for rooftop access. Okay, so let's finish the first penthouse floor, fill in the ceiling, and then we can add the columns and windows for the north-facing windows onto the rooftop patio. Finishing up the western wall, we can outline the bedroom and bathroom. Let's fill in the flooring and finish up the level 2 walls and the rest of the rooftop patio. Let's add some giant skylights above the living room. We're almost done. Let's fill in the walls, ceiling, and add some skylights. The last step is to decorate the roof. We will add another layer of white blocks and use gravel as a fill. We can add some HVAC equipment, solar panels, some greenery, and voila, now you know how to build a mid-rise. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out Movement's website using the discount link in the description for 15% off your next purchase. My name is Matt, and thanks for watching.